By the powers vested in me, I hereby constitute this assembly as a legal congregation of the University of Pretoria. During this assembly, diplomas and degrees and certificates with all the associated rights and privileges will be awarded to and conferred upon the candidates whose names appear in the program. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seat. Thank you. I now kindly request you to please join us in a moment of silent prayer or meditation to give thanks for the achievements of our students who graduate this afternoon. Thank you. As the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria, it's my privilege to extend a hearty word of welcome to all of you at this very special occasion, our graduation ceremony. I especially wish to welcome all the parents, family members, and friends of those who graduate this afternoon. I'm pleased to have amongst us also the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, Professor De Yocha, welcome. The Deputy Deans, Professor Rantlawani and Professor Manning, the heads of the academic departments and all our academic colleagues. I also wish to acknowledge Mr. Wallace Isaacs, Deputy Director, Enrollment and Student Administration and the representative of the Student Representative Council this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, there are very few official duties befalling the Vice Chancellor and Principal that I find as uplifting and as inspiring as officiating at a graduation ceremony. Graduations represent what is at the very center of our academic mission, academic achievement. Today is all about the celebration of achievement as a result of having worked hard, perhaps made a personal sacrifice or two, and of course, applying your talent. I believe that our graduates here today have clearly heeded the words of one of South Africa's greatest leaders, Nelson Mandela, whose birth centenary we are acknowledging this 2018 year. On an occasion, he said, it is what we make out of what we have been given, not what we are given that separates one person from another. I'll repeat. It is what we make out of what we have been given, not what we are given that separates one person from another. Every graduate sitting before me this afternoon has clearly utilized what you have been given. Otherwise, you would not be here this afternoon. I'm sure that you have challenged yourself cognitively, intellectually, and emotionally to reach this point of celebration. Our heartiest congratulations to each and every one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is often said that the most significant contribution a university makes to any society is through its graduates. And indeed, all the research shows that educational attainment is a very effective lever for a society to increase social cohesion and quality of life. Each year, this university hosts two series of graduation ceremonies, in autumn and then in spring. Today is the final graduation for 2018. We are concluding our spring graduation series. So this afternoon, we participate in the culmination of our 39 graduation ceremonies for 2018, during which we will have conferred more than 13,000 academic qualifications, and among them, 391 doctorates. This is a historic record for the University of Pretoria and indeed for universities in South Africa. Similarly, our health sciences faculty is celebrating a record number 
of 45 doctoral graduates this year. I wish to commend and congratulate the dean, the deputy deans and the faculty on this historic achievement. Congratulations. But ladies and gentlemen, the University of Pretoria is not focused on numbers alone. What matters first and foremost to all of us is academic quality. I wish to assure everyone here today that the decision to choose the University of Pretoria has been a wise one. The university is ranked amongst the top 500 universities in the world out of a pool of about 22,000 universities worldwide. This gives us an indication of quality and accreditation. But then beyond rankings, there's the matter of impact. The question of does the university's teaching and research make a difference in our local communities and in society? In the case of the Faculty of Health Sciences, this is an easy question to answer because this is a faculty that is all about making a difference in people's lives. The lives of individuals on a daily basis through clinical service, clinical teaching and research. There are many examples I can quote. Just one, this year, the faculty's Department of Nuclear Medicine made a breakthrough in cancer treatment by being one of only three platforms in the world to use alpha therapy to treat advanced stage prostate cancer. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to look at the citations of our doctoral graduates this afternoon. The citations in full are printed in your program. As you read through those citations, you will see, and it should become apparent to you, the significance of the impact of the work undertaken in the Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Pretoria. Our doctoral graduates, and indeed our master's graduates as well, have been busy conducting research that matters. Research that improves the quality of life and research that will save lives. You will read in that program research on cancer, tuberculosis, HIV, pregnancy complications, nutrition, are just examples of the focus areas of the University of Pretoria Health Sciences faculty. Evidence that our work matters and our research matters. I wish to commend and congratulate each person graduating this afternoon. Through your hard work, your self-discipline, your focus, and as I said, perhaps your personal sacrifice, you have acquired skills and you have contributed to knowledge that will not only advance your own career, but very importantly, the work that you have done will be making a difference to all of our lives. Today is the time to celebrate your achievement and your success, and particularly so with those who have supported you along your journey. This is the time to be proud, it is the time to be joyful, and it's the time to bask in the pride of your achievements. I wish to urge the graduates, as you walk onto the stage, not to be anxious or nervous, because this is your moment of celebration. Congratulations on behalf of all of us. I now invite you to enjoy the ceremony with us, and I also request the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, Professor De Yacha, and the, supervisor, and the supervisors to introduce to me the candidates present whose names appear in the program. Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin with the doctoral graduates, and I do wish to remind you that the full citation is printed in the program. Please do read it. Professor De Yacha.
Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, the supervisors in the School of Medicine will now introduce the doctoral candidates to you. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Saji Alamutal, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor in Philosophy, prepared under my supervision and with Dr. Mia van Rooy and Dr. Alisa Pulukdaria as co-supervisor. In her thesis with title, Electron Confocal and Atomic Force Microscopic Analysis of Platelets, Fibrin and Erythrocytes in Atopic Asthma, the Promovenda studied the ultra structure and blood components, including red blood cells, platelets, and she evaluated the clotting properties and mRNA levels of factor 13A in allergic asthma patients for the first time, not only in a South African cohort, but globally. The study demonstrated that these patients had all have altered system, um, systemic coagulation system and morphological variations in these blood cells. Altered coagulation may therefore be the molecular mechanism that is potential due to inflammatory conditions and which modulates the clotting properties. Madam Vice-Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Yvette Chlope, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with his thesis entitled Effects of Inhibiting Vascular Endothelial Growth Factor Receptor 3 and CXC Chemokine Receptor 4 on metabolism and metastatic marker expression in melanoma and endothelioma cells, prepared under the supervision of Dr. Mabeta and with me as co-supervisor. In her thesis, the Promo vendor investigated the influence of these parameters on cell survival, morphology, and metabolism in cancer cells. She demonstrated changes in the levels of glucose 6-phosphate, pyruvate, and lactate, and showed that blocking these receptors decreases tumor growth. This resulted in the inhibition of melanoma and ethelioma cell adhesion. Findings on the effect of inhibiting these receptors from binding to the ligands contribute to the understanding of melanoma and endothelioma tumor progression and to the possibility of target cell metabolism in the treatment of these tumors. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Dr. Brandon Jackson, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy prepared under my supervision and with Professor McQueen as co-supervisor. 
Anesthesis, hypercoagulability using biophysical parameters in HIV positive versus HIV negative patients with deep vein thrombosis, the Probovindus studied inflammatory profiles, clotting profiles, viscoelastic profiles, and ultrastructural profiles of HIV positive, HIV negative, and also patients with deep vein thrombosis. He demonstrated that deep vein thrombosis patients have blood that is more hypercoagulable and with an upregulated inflammatory system. The Primavendus proved that HIV positive patients have a different coagulation co profile compared to HIV negative patients, where the latter can result in hypercoagulability and deep vein thrombosis. Management of HIV infected patients will therefore be improved with increased detection and monitoring of hypercoagulation. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Abi Kasunga, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with the thesis titled Modulation of Osteoclast and Osteoblast Differentiation and Activity by G-Protein Coupled Receptor 120 and Peroxisome Proliferator Activated Receptors, prepared under my supervision and with Professor Marlena Kruger as co-supervisor. In his thesis, the Prima Vendus aimed to determine the roles of GPR120 and PPORs in the bone protective effects of unsaturated fatty acids. Using RNA interference, he discovered that the beta arrestin 2 signaling pathway is responsible for the effects of GPR120 signaling fatty acids. He further demonstrated that unsaturated fatty acids could activate PPORs in osteoclasts. This study is the first to demonstrate the potential role of GPR120 and PPORs in mediating the effects of unsaturated fatty acids in bone. Furthermore, this study has increased our understanding on the potential of these receptors as drug targets for bone degenerative diseases such as osteoporosis. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I should like to introduce Dr. Mpohomo, who has uh, complied with the, for, with the study for the degree of uh, Doctor of Philosophy under the supervision of Professor Kerr and myself. The thesis is uh, on the non acid gastro. Esophageal reflux is associated with the squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus among South Africans. In the study, he studied the association between uh, non acid gastroesophageal reflux and squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus, where it suggests that uh, non reflux may be uh, a mechanism by which other risk factors may lead to the development of squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus. The, the thesis demonstrated that helicobacter infection is associated with the development of gastric atrophy, which in turn reduces acid production in the stomach, resulting in non-acid reflux. The author suggests that uh, treatment of uh, Helicobacter pylori infection may result in, in a treatment of non-acid 
may prevent non-acid reflux and therefore the uh, development of cancer. Madam Vice Chancellor, I should like to request that uh, you confer the degree to Dr. I, I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Nadira Kamker, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled Psychiatric Sequelae and Mental Health Aftercare Experiences in Women Who Have Had a Life-Threatening Complication in Pregnancy and Those with Uncomplicated Pregnancies, an explorative descriptive study prepared under my supervision and with Professor Bob Patterson as co-supervisor. The study showed that women were not only susceptible to risk that predisposed them to develop psychiatric sweet sequelae, but also experienced life-threatening complications that increased their propensity to develop such sequelae. Psychiatric complications were identified Participants with life-threatening stresses experienced greater distress and psychiatric complications, which were self-limiting. An overarching finding was the sense of acceptance, the will to survive, and an unwavering belief in God. Mental health aftercare experiences of the women included the lack of empathy and communication by healthcare providers and a fear of stigmatization. The concept of resilience has been proposed in these women who were able to cope and adapt despite the adversity, adversities experienced. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice Principal, I introduce to you Tondani Asaf Mbuneni, who has complied with the requirements for the degree PhD Medical Microbiology with a thesis entitled Evaluation of a Novel Community-Based Approach to Molecular Diagnosis of Tuberculosis in Swane District, South Africa, prepared under my supervision and with Dr. Owen Eels as co-supervisor. Globally, up to one-third of persons with active tuberculosis disease go undetected and untreated. Many symptomatics do not present themselves to healthcare facilities for investigation. Diagnostic opportunity is also lost when poor quality cough specimens from presumptive cases get rejected by laboratories. The promo vendors demonstrated a feasible, highly sensitive procedure for detection of mycobacterial DNA from small quantities of poor quality cough specimens. In the follow-up phase in households, oral specimens were collected by flock swap into molecular transport medium from persons with at least two typical symptoms of the disease. Real-time PCR processing of samples identified mycobacterial DNA from almost one-third of specimens that were missed by comparative current first-line diagnostic methods. The findings are significant. A quantitative, simple, highly sensitive molecular TB screening tool is offered, designed for community-based application. Madam Vice Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations.
Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Kaitumetsi Motibeli, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctorate of Philosophy with a thesis entitled Pharmacokinetics and Pharmacodynamics of Novel Estradiol Analogues, prepared under my supervision and with Dr. Mercier and Prof. Cromarty as co-supervisors. In her thesis, the Primavenda investigated three in silico designed sulfur moylated 2 methoxy estradiol analogues in vivo as potential anti cancer agents. Screening limits of each analogue were successfully determined via liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry, mass spectrometry. Systemic toxicity was investigated intraperitoneally in a murine model. Data reflect the potential of these drugs to bind the enzyme carbonic anhydrase 2, delaying early metabolism of these drugs. This research stems from the need to improve on current chemotherapeutic agents and to focus on the design of drugs which are effective against cancer cells at low doses administered at less frequent intervals. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Tandi Mkoku, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis entitled Effect of an Inhibitor of Epigenetic Reader Proteins in Combination with an Antimitotic Estradiol Analog on Anti-Cancer Signaling Pathways, prepared under my supervision and with Prof. Engelbrecht and Dr. Stander as co-supervisors. In a thesis, the Prima Vendor investigated the synergistic effect of these potential anti-cancer agents on the inhibition of tumor cell growth in breast cells. The combination of these compounds caused cell arrest, reduction in mitochondrial potential, an increase in caspase activity, culminating in cell death. Protein expression studies of apoptotic and epigenetic markers showed an increase in anti-cell survival markers and histone levels. This study is the first to report on the potential anti-cancer effect of the combination of a bromo-domain inhibitor and in silico designed and lock, thereby enabling researchers to evaluate combination with minimal side effects in chemotherapy. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Dr. Kalei Naidu, who has uh, complied with the requirements for the de degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis prepared under my supervision titled A Symptomatological Study of Syndromal and Undifferentiated Anxiety Comorbidly to Acute Phase Schizophrenia. In her thesis, uh, the Promovenda found undifferentiated anxiety was discernible from syndromal anxiety without evidence of a confounding influence by the severity of acute phase schizophrenia symptoms, akathisia, 
or medication. This is the first quantitative verification of undifferentiated anxiety in this specific population, which provides substance to the diagnostic classification category anxiety disorder not otherwise specified. The study serves as an empirical foundation for clinicians to recognize undifferentiated anxiety in this population, even in the absence of syndromal anxiety and when psychotic features are dominant. The study may further serve as foundation for future research into the clinical importance, prevalence, etiology and treatment of undifferentiated anxiety. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request that you confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Lene Prucha, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled, An Anatomical Study of the Nerves Targeted for Sensory Blocks of the Head and Neck in Neonates and Infants, prepared under my supervision and with Professor Adrian Bosenberg as co-supervisor. In this thesis, the Promovenda investigated the clinical a clinically applicable anatomy of five commonly performed pediatric head and neck uh, regional nerve blocks. Through the dissections of neonates and infant cadavers, the applicable nerves and surrounding structures were exposed and the most effective methods for blocking these nerves was proposed. This research study will result in a substantial improvement of the relevant anatomical knowledge required to perform nerve blocks on pediatric patients. Subsequently, fewer complications and difficulties will be encountered, which will ensure that these pediatric nerve blocks are performed with greater confidence and ease by the performing clinicians. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree to the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam, Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Matthijs Jacobus redling who has complied with requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled Profiling the Vaginal Microbiome and Metabolome of Reproductive Age Women Attending a Tertiary Academic Hospital, prepared under my supervision and with Professor Marty Eller as co-supervisor. In his thesis, the Promovenda studied the vaginal microbiome and metabolome of women during the third trimester of pregnancy by using high fruit put methods. Dominant bacterial populations in late pregnancy may lead to complications such as preterm birth. The vaginal microbiome of women with bacterial vaginosis, women with HIV, and women with both were investigated. Findings suggest that the dominating species are the most metabolically active, confirming them as the correct targets for disease management. In addition, women co-infected with HIV and BV have significantly more diverse microbiomes, indicating an increased risk to vaginal inflammation, impaired epithelial barrier integrity, HIV genital tract shedding, and ultimately higher rates of HIV transmission. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations.
Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you June Serum, who has complied with the requirements for the degree of philosophy with a thesis titled Identification and Characterization of Bioactivity of Simulated Gastrointestinal Digested Indigenous Southern African Honey Samples, prepared under my supervision and with Professor Annabel Gasper as co-supervisor. In her thesis, the provender investigated the effects of gastrointestinal digestion on the functional food properties of Southern Africa honey. The study found that with gastric digestion, the antioxidant, antibacterial, and anti-inflammatory activity was re retained. With gastrodudinal digestion, variable effects was observed, which included partial loss of cellular antioxidant activity, species-specific loss of antibacterial activity, retention of cellular nitric oxide scavenging activity, and inhibition of LPS-mediated platelet activation. At physiological relevant concentrations, Southern African honey has predominantly an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effect in the, the stomach, and while only an anti-inflammatory effect in the rest of the GIT. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Temitope Sukoya, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled, The Effect of Cotrimoxazole on Markers of Immune Activation in HIV-Infected Patients on Highly Active Antiretroviral Therapy, prepared under my supervision and with Professor Martin Nivote as co-supervisor. In her thesis, the Promovenda examined the effects of cotrimoxazole in HIV-infected patients on successful treatment using a randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled study design. The study concluded that cotrimoxazole does not demonstrate a specific immune modulatory effect and did not provide evidence to support its prolonged use in patients who have attained significant immune reconstitution. In fact, the study demonstrated that this approach may result in potential harm as evidenced by decreases in blood cell counts and increases in markers of microbial translocation and monocyte activation. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request that you confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Funeka Sokadela Eccles, who has complied with the requirements for the d degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled A Comparison of Psychosocial and Psychiatric Features of Mentally Capable versus Mentally Incapable Individuals Referred by the Courts for Forensic Psychiatric Observation in Relation to an Alleged Sexual Offense. It was prepared under my supervision and with Professor Herman Pretorius as co-supervisor. The study showed that the majority of those referred were mentally capable, were known to the victims and lived in close proximity or with them. Girls and boys, elderly women and socially isolated individuals seemed vulnerable to both those who were and those who were not mentally capable at the time of the alleged incidents. Theories on collective violence, trauma reenactment, patriarchy, and social cognitive theory of learning offer possible explanations. 
a perceived oppression of men may render potential perpetrators amenable to acts of violence, a theory of vulnerability that applies to both victims and potential perpetrators has been proposed from the study as an explanation of sexual offending as a preventative approach to sexual and other forms of violence. Multi-system prevention approaches and research involving those at risk of becoming perpetrators of violence and not just the victims are recommended. She presented the findings at the International Congress in Belgium and a scholarly book publication is in the planning stages. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Dr. Mornay Stradom, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis prepared under my supervision and with Dr. Janet Bester as co-supervisor. In his thesis, with title, The Effects of Bitters Aritans Venom on Blood Cell Ultrastructure and Coagulation in Humans, the Promovendus aimed to address the limitation that no reliable or rapid method is currently available to confirm snake bite envenomation on blood chemistry. He demonstrated that direct exposure to puff adder venom on human blood causes significant physiological changes to platelet activity, erythrocyte morphology, and dramatic effects on fiber and fiber network ultrastructure we would fail to form proper fibrin fibers. The Promovendus demonstrated the value of the techniques he used as a potential point of care investigation to assist clinicians with possible first stage clinical confirmation of envenomation. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Isabel Swanepoel, who has complied with the requirements for the de degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis prepared under my supervision titled The Effect of Psychological Resilience and Vulnerability on the Impact of Adverse Life Events on Fatigue, Motor Dysfunction and Paresthesia in Multiple Sclerosis. Among 1,239 participants with multiple sclerosis, this study found that adverse life events during the preceding 60 days predicted fatigue motor dysfunction and paresthesia. This effect was moderated by resilience and worsened by vulnerability. Vulnerability was not simply the opposite of resilience and had a markedly larger effect than resilience on the impact of the adverse events. Knowing that resilience and vulnerability influence the impact of adverse events is important for people with multiple sclerosis and their clinicians as to inform and develop therapeutic and preventative interventions and subject these to efficacy studies. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request that you, that you confer the, the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Master of Medicine Anesthesiology, or in this case, Surgery. Um, <laughs> Fatima Dokrat.
Rudzwani Kalushni. Pamela Matabula. Hendrik Pretorius. Marlies Treater with distinction. Master of Medicine in Family Medicine. Urivsa Bura. In Internal Medicine, Ketiwe Nuiswa. Master of Medicine, Pediatrics, Samaldin Idris. <laughs> Reneth Shazi. <laughs> Porsche. Sigidle Gregory Lamb with distinction <clears throat> in neurosurgery. Gumisa Gelata <laughs> Master of Medicine in Neurology Kurepse Nguzi In obstetrics and gynecology, Nokubonga Makubo. In orthopedics, Charles Duplessis. Moklakona Kwedi. <clears throat> Sepo Makinta. <clears throat> Maketo Molepo. Master of Medicine in the Pathologies, Medical Virology, Oliwakemi Laguda Akimba. In Plastic Surgery, Magnus Potriter. Psychiatry, Tanya Pearton. <clears throat> Master of Medical Pharmacology, Hendrik Swanepoel.
We move on to Master of Philosophy, Gynecological Oncology, Mfudisu Mabenge. Matthijs van Aert. In the School of Medicine, Master of Science in Pharmacology, Laura Damadio Gumeu. Samisu Mlambu, with distinction. <laughs> Haiku Shiliak. <laughs> Trophimus Tembu with distinction. In medical criminalistics, Laura Mitten with distinction. Medical Microbiology, Jean-Ré Stein. In Medical Virology, Itumuleng Baloy. In Human Physiology, Desiree Fraser with distinction. <laughs> Travis Sauga also with distinction. <laughs> Odette Emerson with distinction. In sports medicine, Isaac Chauke. <laughs> Camille Duplessis. <laughs> Fulufelo Mazziga. Tulani Nguenya. <laughs> Malani Palane. <laughs> Ashendra Ramji. In sports science, Jeanette Kutzer. <laughs> Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science Honors in Pharmacology. Rupetsu 
Tuairua. In medical physics, Abraham Paula. In medical microbiology, Duvuzani Sintumule. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Clinical Medical Practice. Dennis Nkwane. <laughs> Becky Ntmane. Rotsitwa Ramalata. <clears throat> Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery, Josias Kutsia. Sharon De Brain. Polilo Funani. <laughs> Mantungwa Langeni. Lindiwe Macheke. No more way to Nizi. Bilang. Mulefe. <laughs> Mongigas Ndamase. Tatu, Tatu Serudu. <laughs> Melani Sangange. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the highest certificate in sports science. Ayanda Masimula. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, the supervisors will now introduce the four candidates in the School of Healthcare Sciences that completed their doctoral degrees.
Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Yvonne Komrink, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled Strategies to Preserve the Professional Dignity of Nurses in a Demanding Healthcare Environment, prepared under my supervision and with Dr. Shirley Mughali as co-supervisor. In her thesis, the Promovenda explored nurses' experiences regarding factors that impact on the professional dignity. During the initial phase of the study, she gathered descriptions from professional nurses in selected primary health care facilities. In the second phase, strategies were developed, and in the third phase, a multidisciplinary team refined it. The strategies reveal multiple future possibilities to value nurses' professional dignity and to curtail work experiences which are contradictory to their desire to prioritize patient care. Madam Vice Principal, uh, Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Beauty Ruth Klongwani, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled Promoting Health and Well-being of Teenage Mothers in Mopani District, Limpopo Province, prepared under my supervision and with Dr. Maretha Dival as co-supervisor. The Promovenda used PENDA's health promotion model to explore and describe the challenges experienced by registered nurses regarding health promotion and well-being of teenage mothers. Registered nurses reflected that teenage mothers are reluctant, afraid of being scolded or discriminated, and fail to report to the clinic for care. Guidelines were developed to promote the health and well-being of teenage mothers to assist them to return to school after delivery of their babies. The study will inform the government to improve access to and utilization of comprehensive sexual and reproductive health care for teenagers. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. <clears throat> Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Lillian Jawunkosi who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled Development of Guidelines to Improve the Quality of the Choice of Termination of Pregnancy Services in Public Health Facilities in the Tswani District in Gauteng Province, prepared under the supervision of Prof. F. M. Mulawuti and myself as a co-supervisor. The Promovenda used the Donabadian model of quality care to assess the current state of quality of structure, process, and outcomes of the choice of termination of pregnancy services in public health facilities. The study revealed a poor state of the structure and processes in situ OP services rendered at public health facilities, which have not been altered to meet the needs of women. Guidelines to improve the quality of choice on termination of pregnancy services were developed. These findings will inform policymakers 
on strategies that can improve the quality of the termination of pregnancy services in public health facilities. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I confer you to, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. <laughs> Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Constance Balatlive Sekobela who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled Developing Guidelines for Local Role Players to Implement the School-Based HIV and AIDS Prevention Program, prepared under my supervision and with Dr. Maretha Dival as a co-supervisor. The promovenda applied the socio-ecological model and Delphi technique to explore and describe the challenges and the needs of role players in the implementation of the school-based HIV and AIDS prevention program. Inadequate resources and minimal parental involvement were found to be challenges hindering the implementation of the program. Guidelines were developed to address the challenges of the role players in the implementation of the program. The establishment of dedicated school-based HIV and AIDS prevention program is recommended. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Master of Occupational Therapy. Shana Lawrence. Master of Physiotherapy, Michelle Bester. Master of Nursing Science in Clinical Fields of Study, Arita Krier. Usisiwe <laughs> Maseko. Dumusile Mukwane. Elizabeth Ramawi. Yunus Shilangu. In nursing education, Muneo Mosetle. <laughs> Bachelor of Occupational Therapy. So, Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the bachelor's degrees. In this case, occupational therapy, Nonchlanchla Nsini. Nisi, sorry. Of dietetics, Lihoni Fortman.
radiography in diagnostics, Mametsai Monimome Honde. Bachelor of Nursing Science, Education and Administration, Mpoze Bafedile. Tingana Chabalala. Kifilwe Tlamini Kebu Seditswe Konse Marie Louise Hubert. Natasha Hubert with distinction. Manoko Kataka. Faith Kapola. Ramadimitsa Maka Gloria Marbe Matukwane Mabena Julia Makova Selo Makura Cordelia Mapempeni Thomas Matabula Christina Matole Layani Matonsi Patricia Mbayani Ramachubani Melo Rasebe Nkuseni Non to be kai se ngwen yani Sibongile ngwenya
Pendile Kumalu. Dudizile Radebe. Salumi Ramabu with distinction. Well done. <laughs> Matsidi Sekopo. <laughs> Lena Stevens. Nokutula Tembe <clears throat> Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, the supervisor will now introduce the doctor ca doctoral candidate in the School of Health Systems and Public Health. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Victor Sital, who has complied with all the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Public Health with a thesis titled An Assessment of School Feeding Program Pilot Phase and its Relationship with Enrollment, Attendance, Retention, and the Local Agricultural Production in Nampula Province in Mozambique, prepared under the supervision of Professor Josephine Kiamba with Professor Cheryl McCrindle as co-supervisor. In his thesis, the Promovendus demonstrated that the introduction of a school feeding program in Ampula province has resulted in an increase in learners' enrollment and retention, as well as regularity and punctuality in school attendance. The evidence presented in this assessment supports the continuation and expansion of the national school feeding program in Mozambique. Madam Vice Pr Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Master of Science in Clinical Epidemiology. Olimika Oluyede. In Public Health, Tebojo Maitilecha. Temitope Adioye Oja, with distinction. <laughs> Master of Public Health, Apongu Azor Mbe. Phyllis Chituki. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 
Mama Bocho Kokolo. Ivan Manasse. Mashudu Mashamba with distinction. Well done. Tariro Muslanda. Pakamile Mkhadi. Ntabi Seng Mukhane. Non tobacco in Charlie. Nisha Naidu. <clears throat> Adivau Rambuda. In aerospace medicine, Sesikulu Umbata. Tokuzile Shange. And for the second time on the stage, Hendrik Swanepoel. <laughs> Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor, no, it, these are Postgraduate Diploma in Occupational Medicine and Health. <clears throat> Progress, Ditsele. Ashley Mtunzi. Postgraduate Diploma in Health Systems Management, Executive Leadership, Golani Mfanta. Madam Vice-Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the Master of Science in Dentistry. So you'll notice that we move over to the School of Dentistry now. Michelle Tukuru. Bachelor of Dental Surgery, Gonse Malekane. <laughs> Mama Pelo Maluleka. Mpo Marakalala. <laughs> 
Fasudi Nkosi. A latecomer back to the School of Medicine, Nompumelo Masondu, and that is for uh, the bachelor's degree in BCHB. Thank you, Madam Vice Chancellor. Ladies and gentlemen, let's applaud all our graduates this afternoon. <laughs> to our graduates, we trust that the time you've spent at the University of Pretoria is a time in which you've accumulated positive memories, you have formed friendships and perhaps networks that will last you a lifetime. We also hope that during your course of study, you've acquired values and a work ethic that will serve you well in your future. We are confident that with a qualification with the University of Pretoria, you are well positioned to realize your career goals, whatever they might be. But it's often said that no person is an island. Whilst we celebrate your individual success today, I'm sure you can remember family members, members of the community, friends, sponsors, who have supported you throughout your journey, including the academics and the Faculty of Health Sciences. So I now invite the graduates to express your appreciation to all of those who have supported you. In my capacity as the Vice Chancellor and Principal, I wish to extend my appreciation to the Dean, the Deputy Deans, and for his hardworking team to, for guiding our graduates through this point of success. We're exceptionally proud of each and every one of you. I also wish to thank all our University of Pretoria staff, the administrative, the technical, the support staff, our security staff, for arranging this week of graduation ceremonies. Thank you for the professional way in which you have done so. I wish each and every one of you this afternoon success in your future journey. Do remember that the University of Pretoria is your alma mater, and we urge you to remain in constant touch with us Remember too that in this rapidly changing world, you might want to pursue another degree or another qualification. And all of you who have not yet have one of these red gowns, we have more in stock. <laughs> so we would look forward to welcoming you back to the University of Pretoria. In conclusion, I wish to return to our great leader Nelson Mandela by quoting him once again. Sometimes it falls on a generation to be great. At this time, our country needs you. Particularly, we need you to be that great generation. Let your greatness blossom. Our very best wishes to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've now come to the end of the formal proceedings. Before we close, I wish to invite all of you for refreshments afterwards in the marquees immediately outside of this hall. I now request you to stand for the singing of the national anthem and to please remain standing afterwards until the assembly has been dissolved and the academic procession has left the auditorium. Please all rise for the singing of the national anthem.
By the powers vested in me, I hereby dissolve this assembly of the University of Pretoria. Thank you. Oh.